Shan Wu was murdered in February in 2013. She was the 12th woman to be killed that year. She was attacked with a cleaver and I've made 69 cleavers uh, to try and suggest that, that anger and that ferocity. And the reason that she was killed is because her ex-partner was jealous and she wanted to move on in her life. He did admit to it and then he, he's been sentenced and he's in prison now. That beautiful young woman is gone. Amanda Wood was a 43-year-old woman who was murdered by her husband. The judge commented that your wife is not a chattel. I've got so many guns there, I know we only use one gun, but he just, you know, such a violation, you think that you're safe in your own home, and you're not. You can be shot by the person that you married that loved you, but wants to control you. This is... Suad Benamadi, a 66-year-old woman from Perth. She was uh, murdered by her husband of 20 years. Uh, apparently it was a violent and difficult relationship. He stabbed her and he beat her. His children were witnesses to this. The vase was what was broken over one of the children's head. You know, I couldn't find anything about her. Anything I've read has been about the murder and nothing personal about her. So I've tried to give her some beautiful paper, something that shone, that, and I've given her gold roses. The title of the show is Control, Abuse, Kill. She'll be right, mate. The whole aim was a memorial for those women in 2013 because I've been getting the information from Counting Dead Women website, and 2013, the cases were settled and sorted, and we knew what had happened and we knew who killed them, and I could find the story. So I came upon the house and this scrapbooking paper because as a piece, it stands out, it's very strong and it holds together. But the thing about paper is it's very fragile. You know, I could just hit that with one fist and that's destroyed. This is Lana Towers and she was only 25. She was beaten to death by her partner. And what really got to me about this young woman's death was that she left two children, a, a five-year-old boy and a four-year-old girl. So they're gonna be impacted for the rest of their life from this domestic abuse, this killing. I'm looking at these houses and because they're mainly a memorial, I want them to be beautiful. I don't want them to be ugly, I want them to be beautiful, I want them to appeal. But what I've done in each of them is to, to try and put the story inside of them. And so as I worked through these houses, as I read more and I read uh, coroner's reports and judges' comments and stories about people, I began to realise that it couldn't just be a memorial about those women who've died. It, I couldn't do that in isolation from what was causing all these deaths. So I've, I've had to add some more components to this work. The famous wife beat a singlet came from because I was wearing a singlet one day and somebody said to me, oh, got a wife beater on and I was totally horrified <laughs> that I was wearing one. And so this indoctrination starts from a very early age. So I put some little baby singlets in. I've dyed those little baby singlets. I reckon at triple O, Kids are starting to have behaviour towards women modelled. So I've put a whole range of comments on here about the expectations that boys have as they're growing up, like don't cry, be a man. I think it puts unnatural expectations on them and I think a lot of that contributes to why maybe men are not stepping in and discouraging other men to behave in that way. I guess I'm just wanting people to remember these women. I think everyone needs to be remembered. And I'm hoping it gives them an awareness of domestic abuse. People will question things. They'll say, oh, why are there knives in this? And why, why have they got the ice pipes? And why have I got syringes? And why have I got real needles stuck into them? And I'm 
hoping they can learn something from it and help people who are in that situation so that if something's happening that they will step in and, and stop it. <laughs>